Welcome back to ITC Sport, and I'm sorry, this just needs to be said. Gary Neville, when you first started out as a pundit on TV, yeah, I'll admit, whenever I switched on the television and saw him in a suit, I used to think, oh no, is this Prison Break Season 6? But to be fair, he since established himself as a reasonable and fair pundit. Which is surprising, considering as a player, he looked like someone whose brain probably looked like mashed potato. But I'm sorry, this continued defense of Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. I'm convinced Oli could steal a bus and crash it through your kitchen wall, and you'd still have its back. If you would have said 22 years ago that United fans would be turning on me supporting the guy who won us the Champions League, I would have said no way. But it's 2021, folks, in the Johnson era, anything goes. Do you hear that? Just whining. I mean, don't let the laughing emojis fool you. Neville definitely typed this whilst crying to a bowl of Ben and Jerry's with stains of tears and red wine in his pajamas. And this tweet is entirely missing the point. No, no, Ollie did not win Manchester United in the Champions League. Ah, uh, that was Sir Alex Ferguson. You know, the world-class manager? I mean, do you, do you really want to go back and revisit that 99 Champions League win? Because in that Champions League run, Ollie started one game and played a grand total of nine minutes in the knockout rounds. There were 11 European games that season. Ollie, he didn't play in eight of them. He was given less than an hour against Barcelona and 30 minute cameos against Bronby and then less time than it takes to squeeze out a morning dump in the final. I, I, mean, I don't care if he stuck out a foot to win the match in the last minute. The guy probably didn't even need to take a shower after the game. Nine minutes of exercise. Hmm. Sounds like James Corden's monthly gym plan. You know, before rewarding himself with a double bacon cheeseburger. But yeah, Sir Alex Ferguson, one of the most knowledgeable figures in Manchester United's history, he didn't really trust Ollie for the big moments in Manchester United's history. I mean, those nine minutes, that was just a panicky last minute throw of the dice. So does never really think that that achievement really merits being the Manchester United boss? Because he spent a Champions League final mostly sitting on the bench? Lads! Nanny did that three times. Would you would you give him the gig? No, because he's got the footballing intelligence of a cow's thumb. So why is this any different? Manchester United should always have a manager that other big clubs covet. A instead, you're employing a guy who'd probably fail a job interview at Burnley. I mean, hands up, fans of other clubs, please. Are you jealous that Manchester United have Ollie? Someone that sounds like he was named after the sound of a nutmeg? No! It's like that popular kid turning up to school and deluding himself into thinking that everyone's jealous that he's got a dead rat in his lunchbox. No, I admire your loyalty to your friend, but your loyalty should be to Manchester United and wanting what's best for them. They're the club who gave you a career. Trust me, were it not for the youth coaches of that club, Gary, you would currently be a middle-aged construction worker who wolf whistles at teenagers and who spends his lunch hour burning his tongue and vending machine coffee. Old Trafford is the womb which you fell out of. It's the reason you now live in a mansion with swimming pools and tennis courts. Despite the fact that looking at you, I would say, yeah, you probably got the ability of Emma Raducanu, if Emma Raducanu had leprosy in both her wrists. I promise you, Gary, without this club, you and your family would probably have to drink out of the toilet bowl once a month. And because of Manchester United, you get to go on family holidays to Dubai. Without Manchester United, it would be a caravan to the cliffs of Skegness. Without Man United, when people trick or treat at your house, you would probably have to steal their bag of Kit Kats to feed your kids. So I don't understand this blind loyalty. Listen, for me, if one of my mates from down the pub was going out with my grandmother, I'm not gonna be blindly sticking up for him. I'm not gonna be turning a blind eye to him robbing her jewelry and defecating on her flower pots. What, just because he once gave me a Bulbasaur card when we were six? Sure, me and that mate would've been through a lot together. From playing Crash Bandicoot in his bedroom to comparing our respective DVD nights at Father Riley's house. What, he gave you a bowl of ice cream? Cool. He gave me an Indian burn on my thigh. What? But still, I know where my loyalties lie. With Granny. Somewhere Wayne Rooney's pants just tightened. Do you remember the David Moyes era? Your fans swore your club would never stoop to that level again. The two most important games in Manchester United season is welcoming Liverpool and Manchester City to Old Trafford. You can be an utterly pulling coach short, which is don't bottle those games. It's why Louis van Gaal escaped the realm of becoming a stain in this club's legacy. In the Moyes era, the aggregate score at Old Trafford was Manchester United nil, their most hated rivals six. That was the nadir, the rock bottom moment in the club's history which should never be repeated again, right? S step forward, Ollie. Manchester United this season, nil, most hated rivals seven. Uh, and you might say, oh, but it's okay. Did you not see? We, we beat Tottenham last week. It, it's fine. Sorry, Ollie. <laughs> You dare, don't you dare bring Tottenham into this conversation because their very existence just reminds me that last year you let them come to Old Trafford and score six. Spurs, six! That alone should have been a sackable offence. Yes, Harry Maguire was once at a club who lost 7-1 at home to Spurs, but that was whole city. 
This is Manchester United. Lads, it's Tottenham. That was Ferguson's catchphrase. Because to him, taking care of Spurs was about as simple as babysitting a cat. But for Ollie, apparently to him, that menial task is like trying to wipe the arse of a pterodactyl. Yeah, have fun getting your nose ripped off your face. I mean, it, it's fitting he looks like Andy Circus because that's exactly what Manchester United are right now with the likes of Harry Maguire and Lou Shaw taking on the role of head clowns. Actually, to be fair, Shaw is probably a pretty useless clown. That man would eat the pie before it hit him in the face. Solskjaer's former teammates littering themselves in the media. Even the likes of Roy Keane, they're just blaming the players, choosing to ignore the fact that Manchester United's manager was once sacked by Cardiff. Now, yes, I realise that the midfield looks like a couple of butter donuts, but it's too easy, it's too easy to say that Solskjaer doesn't have the quality at his disposal. I'm probably the only person on the planet sticking up for Fred today. I mean, even his mum is probably trying to distance herself from the fact that he ever fell out of her womb. Good grace, his embarrassed cousins in Brazil are probably requesting that Wikipedia delete his family history. But lads, I remember when Jorginho was almost bullied out of Chelsea in 2018, all because he was toiling under what was mostly a toilet bleach coach. The man was getting booed off the pitch at Stamford Bridge, but I remember thinking, Man City for 50 million quid. Clearly there must have been a player in there and now three years on Man's in the running for the Ballon d'Or. Similarly, Fred, I've been guilty of this, even this season, of falling into the trap of thinking that this guy should probably be driving a school bus or sweeping the streets because clearly football isn't for him. He's got the midfield presence of a burnt coffee and walnut cake. But he was on the same pep shopping list as Jorginho. And again, for 50 million pounds, I refuse to believe that this guy just has the first touch of Barney Gumble. Because in his last season of Shakhtar Zanesk, he was part of the midfield who did beat Man City at home. Not surrendering from minute one like this. I mean, that was when he was being coached by Paolo Fonseca. Someone who carved out a career in management the hard way instead of being handed a silver spoon cushy gig just because of the fact he stretched out a toe 20 years ago. Guardiola is a man who was able to squeeze out a Premier League medal out of Fabian Del. So don't you tell me he wouldn't be able to get a tune out of Fred. This man was earmarked as the heir to Fernandinho. I mean, honestly, had Solskjaer got his hands on Rodri, then I'm convinced people would be calling him a lightweight Spanish fraud who's got the technique of a sloppy milk Shake. Since moving from Ukraine, yeah, a brilliant manager like Jose Mourinho gave Fred eight Premier League games, but ever since then, it's just been Oli, Oli, Oli. Oink, oink, oink. Similarly, Harry Maguire, when playing under Brendan Rodgers, he looked like one of the most fearsome defenders in the league. And let's not forget, he was Pep's first choice centre back on his shopping list ahead of Ruben Diaz. There is a player in there when coached correctly. I'm not just gonna sit here and say that he's just some fat headed fraud who's got the natural talent of a burnt slice of toast. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that he's got the defensive skills of a fried egg. It would be easy and lazy to do that, but no. Guardiola saw this man as the English Jared Piquet. They were willing to spend 70 million pounds on him. Winning the Premier League is not outside the realms of possibility for Harry Maguire. But when he's coached like this, when he's coached by an amateur, then yeah, he's like a walking toaster. I mean, look at the other players in that team yesterday. It's widely accepted that Victor Lindelof is a flat pancake who belongs on Love Island. Okay, let's just forget the fact he was Chelsea's first choice centre back before they bought Antonio Rudiger. I mean, yes, Luke Shaw, okay, right now, is going through one of those patches where he looks like his brain is being controlled by Tom and Jerry. But uh, listen, in that case, just, just pick Alex Tellers then. Arguably, one of the best crossers of a ball in Europe. Jose Mourinho tried to tell you all about Luke Shaw. I mean, Luke Shaw wearing Michael Jordan's number 23. Yeah, sure. It's like me dressing up for Halloween as Henry Winter when I've got the journalistic integrity of a shoe. I mean, Sky Sports ring up Pieface for an interview before me. Why do you think that is? Probably because I'm about as credible as Michael Jackson's alibis. That's of the 15 players using this Manchester derby. Over the course of their careers, they racked up a combined transfer fees of 840 million pounds. Chuck in their way and that's over a billion. And yet Man City didn't even need to break a sweat. The ultimate insult, they didn't even need to make a sub. Ollie, you were given a dream transfer window. Probably the club's best transfer window on paper since 2001. You've been back to the hilt. And, he, and yet you've got the team before me like this. I mean, look at the first goal. Eric Bailly's own goal. Cancelo whips in a perfect cross, but I'm sorry, Bruno Fernandes. Instead of stopping the cross, he just sits back. I might as well have opened his Costa Coffee ham sandwich on the pitch. Cause no urgency, not my job. Nothing to do with me. Manchester United had more shots at David De Gea than Ederson. Well, that doesn't surprise me. Your manager's initials are literally OGs. I mean, the second goal, again, our one Bazaka. Instead of sprinting a Cancelo like a man possessed, he just gets caught admiring the Portuguese left back's face. The ball comes in, Luke Shaw forgets to clear it, and then. Oh, being beaten at your near post. It's seen as a goalkeeping crime, but it happens. I mean, if someone bullets a shot at you at 90 miles an hour, it can squirm under your body. 
it does happen. Christ but it's not even the first time it happened to David De Gea in a Manchester derby. Sergio Aguero rocked it the winner pass him in 2013, but again, he utterly smashed it into the top corner. It happens. But this, Bernardo Silva caressed it with his toe, almost in slow motion, like this was the Matrix Reloaded, and you choose to react as if someone squirted you in the face with a water gun, just spluttering the thing into the back of the net. I'm gonna call it. I don't need to do research for this. This is the most disgraceful goal Manchester United have conceded in the derby since Gary Neville passed it to Sean Goder in 2002. I mean, for that goal, it was a fitting line of comedy from Andy Gray. I know it wasn't commenting on the length of someone's skirt. What Gary Neville is thinking of, I just don't know. Yeah, 48 derbies later, and we're still wondering the same damn thing. Listen, if you don't want to be put in a position where you have to criticize your mates, then don't go into punditry. How many players have you played with, Gary? Players with monster egos who want to eventually try their hands at management. This is going to keep happening. Make no mistake about it. Give it five years and Michael Carrick's going to be struggling to hold his job down at Fulham. Wayne Rooney's going to be on the brink of the sack at Everton. And Neville, he's not going to say a word. So what is this it? I mean, what are you going to do for the rest of your punditry career? In the year 2040, when you've got a face that looks like a wrinkled potato, are you just going to turn a blind I of the fact that Robin Van Persie has lost 10 games in a row as Ajax boss? I mean, what happens when John O'Shea gets sullen relegated to League 2? When Ashley Young loses the dressing room at Stoke? With Tim Howard being regularly laughed at for Bob Bradley-esque interviews on Match of the Day? Are you just gonna ignore all of that because they were your friends? Is this really worth risking your reputation for? Do you really think Ollie is going to abandon you as a friend for daring to speak the truth? Is he really going to stop inviting you around for pizza on Wednesdays? Actually, do, do multi-millionaires st still eat pizza from Uber Eats? Instead, they probably got their own private waiters roughing up a, a five-star three-course meal. Right! <laughs> I don't know though, because Neville still looks like someone who probably still chews broken glass. Neville's argument against a new manager seems to be the fact that, oh, we've already tried getting world class coaches and they didn't work. Oh yeah, and Ollie finished second in the league. Josie Mourinho finished second in the league. But I guess it, it, it doesn't count because Josie did used to drink tins of Carlsberg on your couch, right? I'm guessing because you two didn't get drunk together at an Oasis gig in 1997, then, then I suppose it's an irrelevant stat. Neville seems to be using last season's finish as proof that Ollie's developed the second best team in the country. Really? Do you want to watch back that 5-0 reverse from two weeks ago and try to convince us all that that's the case? Finishing above a crippled Liverpool last season was a bit like beating Oscar Pistorius in a race for the bus. Not really something to brag about, big guy. If you want to talk about last season, well, Unai Emery had a better starting 11 in the Europa League final two years ago and still got slapped 4-1 by Chelsea who were a serious team. I mean, on paper, that Villarreal team in May was a downgrade of what he had at Arsenal. And yet Solskjaer couldn't even mastermind a win over them against a team whose highest wage earner takes home less than Phil Jones. I mean, come on. Honestly, Gary Neville, if you don't want to criticize Ollie, then don't be a pundit. Anyway, that's your video. Let me know what you think. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe. As always, I'll talk to you in a while.